Well, so I just recorded this lecture and I forgot to turn on the microphone. So let's try this again, but for you guys, it's the, the first time. So today we're uh, in chapter 25 and we are talking about the perfect. So this is the last indicative form that you're going to learn ever, ever. Well, there's one more. It's called the, the pluperfect, but we're not going to really cover that today. So uh, the perfect, uh, it's really easy to identify. So um, we're going to see here that we have uh, tense formative kappa alpha. And then we're also going to learn something called a reduplication, reduplication. And so this is uh, the two things that are going to help us identify the perfect. Now, one of the things that makes it a little bit more difficult is that there is no exact equivalence in English. And so when we talk about uh, the perfect, um, there's sometimes it's a little bit difficult to understand it. But we'll, we'll walk through that here in a second. So the meaning of the perfect tense. So this describes a state or condition rather than the action. And so we're not uh, specifically talking about the action. We're just talking about uh, the state or condition of the subject um, on, on this verb. So we're not talking about the direct object, we're talking about the subject. So it's not, um, yeah. So when we look at this, the present, the aorist, the imperfect, and the future, these all talk about how the action is occurring. So he is Lucy. Uh, when we look at that, we're uh, picturing the verb as uh, someone doing the action kind of in this current state presently. Uh, when we say she loosed, we kind of look at the, the action and uh, we just say, okay, here is kind of what's happening. So like, you know, he ran to the store. Uh, we see the whole picture of the person going to the store, uh, but it's just kind of a snapshot. The imperfect, what he was loosing, uh, we're looking at uh, something in past time, but we're kind of seeing it as, as it's going along. And then she will loose. We're hypothetically looking at something in the future. Now, the perfect is just stating a condition of what, what is going on. So it is written. We're not focused on the, the writing. We're just focusing on that final aspect of it, that it is written. So when we talk about scripture, it is written. Obviously, there was writing going on, uh, but the perfect describes this, this final aspect of it, that it is written, that it's there. Now, Mount, uh, when, he t when he talks about this, he, I believe he talks about this completed action and continuing results. Now, that is really uh, not part of the perfect, but that's what, that's what we get from context, uh, this continuing results action. Uh, but we're really just talking about uh, the condition of the verb. And so <clears throat> we're not talking about any continuation, but that, that is just based on, on context. So uh, just the condition of the verb um, as we describe it. So when we translate it, uh, there's a couple different ways that we can translate. We can say like, I am loose or, you know, it is written. And that's just describing uh, the state or the condition of the subject and, and that verb. Now, I think Mounts, uh, he, he talks about, like, I have been loosed. Now, this is uh, fine as well. Uh, we can say I have been loosed. Um, it's kind of getting at, at the same thing. So I am loose or I have been loosed. Since there's really no exact equivalent in English, um, either, either one here is fine. Based on the context and when we're bringing it on to English, that will uh, kind of help determine um, what, is, what is going on there. So the form. So let's talk about the form. So we have this new thing called reduplication, reduplication. And you can see I have this definition of, of reduplication here. So basically, all this does is it takes the first letter, so in this case for Lou, we have lambda, and it just duplicates it, and then it adds a 
well, it's, it's not called a connecting valve, but it adds an epsilon right there. And so we see that duplicate it and add to the front of the stem along with the letter epsilon. So you will always get that. Now, also note, so we have reduplication at the beginning, then we have the perfect active ten stem, and so this is the fourth principal part here, fourth principal part, and then we have this tense formative kappa alpha, kappa alpha. Now note that there's no connecting valve because the tense formative has the alpha. So this is uh, just like the first aorist and the tense formative sa, and so you get lelu ka and then your active ending so lelu common lelu common so pretty pretty simple on the form and as you can see uh the kappa alpha and the reduplication at the very beginning make this form uh very easy to recognize very easy to recognize so let's talk about a few things on reduplication reduplication so as you can expect, just like with an augment, uh, there are sometimes uh, certain uh, words that begin with certain letters uh, will uh, form a little bit differently. So if it begins with a vowel, the initial vowel is going to be lengthened. So remember, alpha and epsilon will lengthen to an eta, and omicron will lengthen to an omega. So this is the same thing that you will ha uh, see uh, in reduplication. Um, but you can still see that this is a uh, perfect because we have the kappa alpha there, the kappa alpha there. So uh, this is not an augment. This is not an augment. This is a reduplication. Even though the resulting uh, form uh, will look like an augment, we know that it's reduplication because the perfect uh, reduplicates, but uh, when you get two vowels, they'll just lengthen there. Now, words that start with a sigma or have this S sound, so this, this word sibilant, sibilant uh, just means like a hissing sound or an S sound. So this does not get reduplicated. Uh, and the, you'll just get an epsilon there as well. So it's not an augment, um, but you're not going to say stalka or sestalka. Uh, that just, for, for Greek-speaking people, that just sounds uh, a little weird. And so they just add a sigma in front of the S sound, in front of the S sound. And so you see this here where you have a sibilant uh, consonant as well, the psi. Uh, you'll see epsalka um, for, for this. Now, if a... <clears throat> um, yeah, so... So play rao, we just get pe, uh, pe play ra ka. Um, now, if you have a stop, if you have a stop, you can see down here in footnote two, uh, words that begin um, with this uh, the stop here, you'll get, so phi, remember you'll, uh, your um, square stops, you have p, beta, phi, well, this first column, it'll just uh, go back to the first column. So you get pe phileka, pe phileka for phila'o. Diphthongs often do not reduplicate, so you can see that there. If a verb begins with two consonants, it will usually undergo vocalic and not consonantal reduplication. Vocalic. So, gano, we will have the vowel there, agnoka. Uh, Agnigoka. And then uh, compound verbs, so just like uh, with the augment, nothing happens to the preposition, but the reduplication happens with the verb aspect. So this is just a helpful slide to kind of see uh, some of the different changes with some notes on what will happen with the perfect. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at the paradigm here. So Remember, this is built off the fourth principal part. And so if you're looking at your vocab, you can count over, you know, one, two, three, four. So we have the, the present, active, future, active, and then aorist, 
active, and now we get the perfect active. So this is built off that. So we have le lu ka, le lu kas, le lu ken, le lu kamen, le lu kata, and le lu kasi, le lu kasi. So as you can see, we have the kappas, kappa alpha right here. And just like uh, we've seen before, uh, we have Ken here uh, where the uh, alpha drops out and we have the epsilon nu. So reduplication plus kappa alpha. So the middle, uh, the middle is built off the fifth principle part. And uh, one of the odd things here is that there's no tense formative or connecting vowel. So you have le lu mai, le lu sai, le lu tai, le lu metha, le lusta. Le untai. And so notice here, we finally have the psi uh, reappearing and because there's no connecting vowel to squeeze out the sigma here. So pretty simple on the perfect middle passive. These aren't that common. Uh, you'll see more perfect actives, but there, there, are, there are some. So there are also, um, Mounts talks about the second perfect. So uh, the second perfect, there's no uh, kappa, uh, there's no tense formative there, um, but there is still the reduplication. So I'm not going to have you um, learn the paradigm for this, but I want to point out some of the most common ones. So genomai, I have the perfect active here, and the most popular one is this third person singular, gegonin, and you'll see that one happen 31 times in the New Testament. But there's only 47 times that it happens in, uh, in the perfect overall. So there's only 16 times that it doesn't happen in this third person singular. So I just put the form here. Uh, same with Erkamai. Now remember, Erkamai has several uh, weird uh, principal parts. So you get Eu Lathan. That only happens eight times. <coughs> and the most common one we see down here. With grapho, we have gegraptai, and this is the perfect middle passive. This happens 67 times, and total, the perfect happens 69 times, and so um, almost all the occurrences are this gegraptai. And you'll see this as it is written. It is written. So you'll see that uh, all the time. So uh, just be familiar with this. Um, you know, some of them that you want to recognize, gegonin, uh, eluth, Leuthen and Gegraptai, uh, some of the most popular ones there. Okay, so this is just a list of common perfects, common perfects. And just to be helpful for you, just to kind of look at it and just see how uh, some of the different words are changed. And so you'll see, you know, Heurisco, um, Eureka, the diphthong didn't, um, didn't change. Um, with Thanesca, Thanesco, you get Te Theneca, Te Theneca, so that's the stop form of Theta. And um, like Lego, remember Lego has uh, some odd principal parts, so you get uh, Heureka. So this is just a good list to look, look over and um, just kind of recognize how the perfect uh, is formed on many of the verbs. Okay, so we can finally fill in this whole entire chart, this whole entire chart. So here is, here is the chart, and this is all the indicative, uh, indicative forms that we have learned so far. And so just looking this over, you have OSA, Amanetta Usi, um, and then you have your active endings, middle passive, and middle passive. And so... Uh, when you're looking over this uh, on your review for the final exam, um, I have you filling out this chart. And so uh, you don't need to have kind of the, the footnotes here. Um, that's just for your, for your own help. Um, but you do need to be able to fill out, uh, fill out this chart. Um, I did make some notes, you know, like the tense formative reduplication. Um, you don't, when you write out the chart, you don't have to do that. But it's just helpful to know. Um, that's just one more addition on uh, how this is how this is formed. 
All right, so that was a pretty quick rundown. Um, if you have any questions, of course, uh, please email me on what's going on, read through mounts. Uh, mounts has a lot of things in there, uh, but hopefully this was a good um, summary of kind of what you need to know.